What settings can you change on your electric XP 3.0? How do these custom settings affect the performance of your bike? We're going to go through each setting in the settings menu so you can configure your electric XP 3.0 to your liking. So to get into the settings menu, you press and hold the plus and minus buttons. Setting number one controls the brightness of the display. I like to leave it in the middle setting on setting two. You can toggle using the plus and minus buttons. You can see setting number one for the brightness is the lowest brightness. Two is the middle setting. Three is the high setting. To switch to the next setting, you would press the power button. Now setting number two controls your, your units. Setting it to zero will display in kilometers. Setting it to one will display in miles. So let's switch it down to kilometers and confirm that that's the case. Now you can see that my odometer is shown in kilometers and my speed is shown in kilometers per hour. Selecting one for setting number two will display everything in miles per hour. You can see miles, miles per hour. Setting number four controls how many minutes the bike will stay on before the display automatically goes to sleep mode. So let's set it to the lowest setting, one minute, and confirm that that's the case. In a minute, the display should go off automatically. One minute later. And there we are. Setting number six is the next setting you can adjust, and that's related to tire size. The default setting is 22 inches, which when you measure with a tape measure is accurate, but people have found that setting it to 23 inches gives you a more accurate speed reading compared to a GPS or your cell phone. The next setting you can adjust is setting number eight, and that's related to whether your bike is gonna be limited to class two or you wanna bump it up to class three. From the factory, your electric XP 3.0 comes as a class two e-bike, which means it's limited to 20 miles per hour both in pedal assist and throttle only modes. Oh! Set setting number eight to 100 and you're done. You're now at class three and you can hit 28 miles per hour in pedal assist. The next setting you can adjust is setting number nine. If you set setting number nine to zero, then from a standstill, the throttle will be active. If you set it to one, you have to be pedaling before the throttle can actually kick in. So we'll see here, it's set at zero. The bike is at a standstill and you see the throttle is active. If you set setting number nine to one, yeah, throttle does nothing. Now if you're pedaling, pedal assist kicks in and now the throttle becomes active. So setting number nine, I definitely want to keep it at zero. Some people may not want the throttle to be active from a st standstill to avoid whiskey throttle. You know, let's say you're just moving the bike around. You might accidentally hit the throttle and the bike can take off, but I prefer to have the throttle active from a standstill because that makes for safer and uh, smoother starts in traffic. So I'm leaving mine at zero. Setting number 10 is called the mode toggle. So on zero, throttle is not active but pedal assist should be active. Yeah, there we go, pedal assist kicked in. Now on number one, throttle is active, but on setting one, pedal assist should not be active. Yeah, we're not getting any pedal assist at all. And on setting number two, we should have both throttle. There's throttle. And pedal assist be active. Yep, there's pedal assist. So setting number 10, I like to leave it at two to have both the ability to use throttle and pedal assist. Setting 11 controls the number of crank rotations before pedal assist kicks in. The default is three, which I think works pretty well, but let's try setting it to one. So setting it to one, it should have the pedal assist kick in pretty quickly. Yeah. So now let's set it to something like five and see if it really takes five crank rotations for the pedal assist to kick in. No, it kicks in very quickly. Let's go to a max of 24. Let's see what that does. Okay, I do see it take longer to kick in when I set it to 24 versus three, but it's not 24 crank rotations. It's just some kind of sensitivity number. 
So the next setting you can adjust is setting number 12, and it's pedal assist strength. The default is one, so that means the pedal assist kicks in with a more gentle force. I have not tried it at the higher numbers, but for this I'm gonna have to go out on the road and see how it feels. So I've got settings, setting 12, pedal assist strength set at the maximum. See how the bike feels when I take off. Yeah, so it definitely has a stronger thrust than when set at the minimum of one, but it's still very manageable. You set it on five, don't be afraid thinking the bike's just gonna take off on you. The next setting you can adjust is setting number 16, which would allow you to reset your odometer. The only reason I would ever wanna look at this or reset the odometer is, for example, if I got a brand new hub motor, uh, that's when I might consider resetting the odometer. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise you don't wanna touch this setting because you'll lose track of how many miles are on your bike. The final setting you can adjust is setting 21, which turns walk mode on or off. Setting it to one allows you to use walk mode. Setting it to zero turns off walk mode. I have a whole video on walk mode and why I've decided to turn it off in my case. I don't find it very useful. And that's it, that covers all the settings. If you have any questions about a specific setting, leave a comment down below. Otherwise, if you're finding this kind of information useful, consider liking the video and subscribing so you can be notified of future content.